Hello everyone and welcome to N2M Tech Talk. I'm your host, Michael Oliverio, and today we will be finishing our Microsoft Bookings series. In our previous video, we covered our personal bookings page. In this video, we'll be creating a shared bookings page. Please note that when you create a shared bookings page, you cannot just go and delete it afterwards. If you're doing any kind of testing, I don't recommend doing that. The page that you create actually creates a user account within the environment and ties that email address to the bookings page you're creating. If you have to go and delete a bookings page, you're going to have to contact N2M for assistance, and we can go ahead in the back end and get all that cleaned up in the environment for you. Um, just please note that this also does not use a license. It's a free account within the environment. To get started, head over to your bookings page from the previous video. If you don't remember how to get there, just head to office.com, click on the search bar at the top, type in the word bookings, and go ahead and click on the app. Now that we're here, let's go ahead and click on create under the shared bookings page. We're gonna go ahead and start a new one from scratch, give it a name, you can add a company logo if you want to. I have one already ready to go here, so I'm gonna click on add a logo, navigate to the one that I want, and click open. This is where you can go ahead and size it. I'll leave it to default right now. Choose the business type, well, IT support. For business hours, we're gonna mess with this a little bit later. I'm gonna leave that alone right now. On the invite staff page, you're going to go ahead and be here by default as an administrator since you're creating the page. Add anybody else you want. I'm going to go ahead and add myself. Change my role. I also want to make me a, an administrator on this page. Um, there's several different options here. Administrator, team member, scheduler, viewer, guest. Here are what each of those roles are and what they do. You have an administrator who has full access to the bookings calendar and all of its capabilities. A scheduler handles the day-to-day -day operations and can manage appointments and customers. A team member have control over their own appointments and availability. A viewer can read access to all parts of the calendar but does not have permissions to make any changes. And a guest cannot open the bookings calendar but can be assigned appointments communicated via emails. Once you've assigned the roles, hit next. This is where you can set up your services. Um, again, I'm going to kind of leave this at default and worry about it a little bit later in the video. So let's hit next. And here you can choose who can book appointments. So is this for people within your organization or for anybody? Since I'm making um, the demo here, I want it to be external for anybody to go ahead and, and click an appointment and book one with me or my team. So I'm going to say anyone here. Click on create and that'll get the page set up. Once created, you'll be taken to this screen here. Go ahead and click on bookings page. In here, you'll see that we've set this to anyone and you can even copy the link by clicking this button here or send an email by clicking the email button. That'll go ahead and open up Outlook, open up a new email. You can put the person you want to send it to and go ahead and send it off. In the business access control, we're going to leave these both as the default unchecked. Customer data usage consent. If you have any um, usage consent information you want to send out, you can go ahead and click a little checkbox here, add what you need to add down here. We're going to leave that off for this page. Default scheduling policy. Now this is going to follow very much the same as what we talked about in the personal bookings page. Your time increments is going to be how often they can book them. Can they book them every five minutes, every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes? Um, if it's 15 minutes, that'll be 11, 11, 15, 11, 30. If it's every 30 minutes, that'll be 11, 11, 30, 12, 12, 30, and so on. Your minimum lead time. So how soon can they book it? Can they book it today? Can they book it tomorrow? How many hours out do you want it to be? And then what's the maximum lead time? Is it 30 days, 90 days, 365 days, which means they can book almost an entire year out. For email notifications, we're going to leave notify the business via email when a booking is created or changed. That'll go ahead and send an email to the to the business. Then you know that there's a new booking or someone had changed the booking. We want to also send a meeting invite to the customer. This way they have their invite link that they can go ahead and join the meeting later. 
and staff control when they choose the type of booking service that we're going to set up it's going to show them who's available i'll leave this on to kind of show it uh, you can turn it off and have somebody else completely manage the bookings page where they just basically pick an appointment it goes to a no employee area and then you assign it out and i'll kind of cover that too and then general availability uh, we'll leave bookable when staff are free turned on moving on to customize your page they have a new page preview here that kind of defines their new bookings environment. If you want the classic one, you can click on that. Uh, we're going to leave the new one turned on. We're going to change the color here. I don't want to set a custom one. I do want to display my logo, which you saw I uploaded my logo earlier. And then lastly is our time zone. I'm going to leave the default here. Um, you can always check this one here that says always show time slots in business time zone. So let's go ahead and turn that on. Once you've made your changes, you're not done. Scroll all the way up to the top and click save. Once you click save, the boxes will go gray. That means that you've saved the changes to your bookings page. Now let's go to business information. Um, this here will allow you to click on basic details and give a little bit more information about you guys. What's your address, what's your phone number, what's your URL. You can change your business type here, which we set in the beginning change your currency if you wanted to, and you can even change the replies to go to somebody else. I'm going to leave the default here since I'm doing the demo. But if you had somebody who's managing your pages, you can put that person's email address or you can put a shared mailbox right there as well. Privacy policy and terms and conditions. If you have specific terms and conditions or privacy policies, you put those URLs in here and it will add it to the meeting. Your business logo. I've already uploaded mine in the beginning. You'll have a button here to upload yours if you haven't done so. Business hours. You can come in here and set specific hours for specific days depending on when your business operates. That'll change the available time for the bookings when people are booking meetings. And this last part here, app integration, we're not going to do anything with this today. That's some advanced booking stuff that we may cover later. Again, all the way up at the top, click on save. Once the boxes are gray, your information saved. Now that we have the basics done, let's go over to services. Now by default, because we're an IT company, this IT support one was already created. I'll leave that one alone, and we'll go ahead and create a new service. You have to give it a name, give it a web design. So we'll help build a website, give it a description. Location, is this gonna be at a building, at a coffee shop, neither for us. We're going to go ahead and add an online meeting here. That'll make it a Teams meeting. It opens up a checkbox here to send an anonymous customer link. And this will basically ensure that your customers are not joining the call from their organization's account and will protect their privacy. This is optional. I'm going to leave it off. How much time do you need? 30 minutes is plenty for us. Buffer time we kind of covered in our personal bookings page. Uh, I don't want any buffer time on our meetings here, but if you needed time before and time after to prep, you can go ahead and add that time in here. Is there a certain cost? Is there a fixed cost, an hourly rate? Is there no cost at all? Um, I'm going to say free here. These notes here are internal notes. So if I have specific services I want to talk about and I want my team to know who's going to be doing the calls, I'll put those notes here and that'll get added to their meeting, internal only. How many people am I going to allow to attend? I don't want any more than five. And then lastly, um, let your customers manage their appointments when it was booked by you and your staff on their behalf. So when you're on the bookings environment, you can actually book in the calendar environment and you can say, once you book it, allow them to go ahead and manage it. So let's turn that one on. Your default language, we're gonna leave English for us. Moving on to availability options. We've covered this a couple of times. Again, time increments. What are the incrementals that they can actually book time for? Um, what's the maximum minimum lead time? Now we have a default scheduling policy we already put in place. I'm just gonna go ahead and use that. So I'll check that box and it'll set all of this to what we set in the previous examples. I'm gonna go ahead and assign staff. Now I've got myself and Brandon available, so I'm gonna put both of us on this one. 
I'm going to allow customers to choose a particular staff for booking. Um, this will basically let them choose, is it Brandon or Michael who is going to be running the meeting? Custom fields. This is where you can say, okay, these are the fields that we want. And the email is mandatory, and so is the phone number. But the address and the notes are not mandatory, but we still want the option for them to put them on there. You can also add custom fields. You can add text fields where you can type up your own question, save it, and mark it required. Or you can even do a drop-down question where you type a question, and you can add a couple of answers, and again, turn it on to be required. I'm not going to do that right now. Notifications. If you want to have texting notifications going to your customers, you have to have a Teams premium license. If this is something you're interested in, go ahead and contact us at N2M and we'll get you set up with that. As far as email notifications go, we want to notify the business email when a booking is created or changed. And that can be the person, again, who handles your bookings page. We also want to send an invite to the customer um, and the additions to the confirmation email. Now you can also, again, type up a custom response down here, make it nice and pretty, and add any little flavor that you want. Our email reminders, this by default has an email reminder one day before, with a little just FYI, don't forget your appointment's coming soon. And then if you have a follow-up, same thing here, 15 minutes after, and then we appreciate your time, go ahead and book another appointment with us. This kind of matches the same thing that we did in the My Bookings page. Once you're done with all of that, go ahead and click Save Changes. And you'll see the new service show up above the IT supports. Now we have web design and we have IT support. One last thing to mention here, you'll notice between the two that we've got set up, one of them has a one-on-one -on -one type meeting. When you create a service, if you set the actual maximum number of attendees to one, It'll lock that in place so that this meeting here will always only be a one-on-one -on -one meeting. So keep that in mind to always set the number of attendees higher than one if you plan on having more than one person come to these. And you'll see in the web design that this one is a one to the end service where IT support is a one-on-one -on -one service. Moving on to staff, this is where you can add more people to this particular page and go ahead and control their roles. Customers, you can go ahead and add in your customers that you want, first name, last name, email address, uh, chats if you have them, phone numbers, any kind of notes. You can kind of build out a customer portal page here. And then lastly, we have calendar. This is where you're gonna manage your bookings. You can assign this out to someone, and I recommend doing that, having somebody on the team that's dedicated to managing the page. The way this works is when new appointments come in, We'll just create a new one here. It's going to come in under the no staff area. So if someone isn't chosen during the initial setup and they create the booking, it's going to come into no staff assigned. And you're going to see that this will show the actual availability of your people. So you can come in here and say, okay, let's click on the one that someone booked. Click on edit and say, I want to give this to this person here and update the booking. And what that'll do is take it off of the no staff and move it over to the person that actually is going to be running the meeting. And if something changes and they're not the one that's gonna be running the meeting anymore, click back on the meeting, click on edit, remove them, update the booking, and it'll go ahead and put it back into the no staff. And if the customer calls and says, hey, we can't do that web design call anymore, go ahead and click on that, click on cancel, and send the cancellations. Along the top, you have a new booking option here. This is where you can go ahead and pick how many people you're gonna have attending it, the date and time, the staff. If you have customers, you can add customers in. Um, you can set things like don't send customer an email confirmation, let the customer manage their own appointment, and send an invite meeting to the customer. I'm not going to create this one. I'm going to discard it but it's also gonna show you how many seats you have booked for this meeting. So if people start accepting it, it'll start filling it in. You have your click to get back to today. You can change to tomorrow, click the drop down, choose a date in the future, click today and come right back to you today. We can add time off. 
So you can say someone's going to be out all day on the 24th. Create that time off and it'll block off their calendar so that they're not an option. I'm going to go ahead and discard that one as well. Moving over, we have our views, day by staff. We can go just to the day, the month. I'm going to leave it day by staff. I like that view the most. And then you can print, export, and all that kind of stuff. Once you have everything configured how you like it, let's go ahead and go back to all booking pages. You'll see that we have the bookings demo page that we just created. If we go ahead and click on share, you're going to get the option to copy the link by clicking this button here. When you do so, what does that look like? Let's go ahead and paste the link into a new tab. Hit enter and it'll go up and pull up our public bookings page. Now this is what people are going to see when they go to that bookings. They can go to a web design or an IT support. And depending on your options, it'll depend on what availability you have down here. So web design on Monday at 8.30. Um, anyone, it doesn't matter. Or they can click the drop down and choose the person that they want. They'll fill in their information down here. We have first and last name was mandatory, email was optional, or email was mandatory, address was optional, but phone number was also mandatory, and then any special requests that they wanted. Once they click on book, it'll go ahead and send off all the notifications to the parties who are part of this. It'll go to your bookings page to manage, and then everybody will be able to join that meeting when it starts. You can click the email button here, and again, that'll just open up an email and go ahead and allow you just to send it off right then and there. Lastly, you can click the ellipses here and clone this one. If you don't want to go through the whole process, you can kind of just clone this one and create a second page. So if you have certain people who are part of this bookings page that do this type of work, you would set it up this way. And if you have other people who are part of different types of work, you would recreate this page and assign them to those as well. That completes our tutorial today on configuring your shared Microsoft bookings page. This also completes our bookings series tutorial. Watch out for our webinars to learn more about Microsoft products, including more about Microsoft bookings. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this and follow us for updates. Thank you and be safe.